How's right, going on guys? Trev back again. Here to bring you another video. This video is going to be doing a science topic, just a fun topic, something probably everybody at one point or another in their lifetime has wondered, which is, is it possible to create an artificial human being? All right, so it's been a while since I've done these types of topics, discussion topics about science, and I find those to be very interesting, and I do enjoy making them. So from time to time, when I have time, you know, kind of get away from just making entertainment type videos and talk about some more serious topics. Uh, those of you who don't know me very well, I do hold a bachelor's degree of computer science, do have um, some experience in artificial intelligence programming, machine learning, so to speak. Um, study both on my own and um, with also some other uh, master's students that were doing their master's degree in artificial intelligence at the university I went to. So that being said, uh, I'm a good person to comment on this kind of thing and give my thoughts on this kind of uh, topic, which is on whether or not we could actually create or replicate or simulate a human being using technology. Can it be done? Is it possible? Um, now this topic kind of spills over a little bit into religion. And I don't necessarily want this video to do that. So I don't want to talk about religion. And I, if people have extra views on what they think a human being is made of, you want to get in, in, into, you know, talking about spirits and things of that nature, please consider that everything we know about human beings in terms of processing information, survival, operations of the brain, the way we think, consciousness and everything, can be broken down scientifically and proven to occur within the body and within the brain. So anything extra, any other add-ons that you have, that's fine. I'm not saying that they're not true or they're not right or anything like that. That's not the topic of this video. The topic of this video is whether or not we could create artificial life that thinks and experiences life in pretty much the same way as we do. Um, now I think when you first start asking this question, you start thinking about uh, these types of topics. The first thing we can say right off the bat is, in terms of hardware, okay, in terms of the actual uh, processing power of the human brain, of the mind, the brain, okay, um, a computer nowadays, you could build a computer for a few thousand dollars that could probably be, I would say, sufficient to replicate pretty much every process we feel in terms of hardware. So in terms of processing it, in terms of storing in memory, you can get a computer for a couple thousand dollars with, let's say, I don't know, 32 gigabytes of memory these days in RAM. You could have, you know, a hard drive, a couple terabytes, which is plenty enough space to store, let's say, at least a little while's worth of experience. Maybe, you know, over the course of a lifetime with all the information we take in through our eyes and everything, you would probably need a lot of space. So it might have to be maybe a few hundred terabytes, this type of thing. So that's something to take into consideration also. But what I'm saying basically is that we could do it using what we have now, at least for a little while, maybe not for 90 years and store it all. But then again, the way the mind works too, long-term memory is also lost over time. Things that it is still in there, but it's not there in formal logic. It becomes informal. And essentially, it's not something that you could just easily recall a lot of the things that happened to you. You're not going to remember every single last little thing that ever happened to you to the minute detail. It does get organized. It does get sorted in, in, in the brain and the, the mind. And basically it's put away in kind of what we call forgotten, so to speak. Important things will stay, but other things may not. But basically what I'm saying is hardware-wise, I feel like we're close enough to be able to at least accomplish this type of thing. Now, where we get into trouble, I think, is when people start thinking about the human experience. And pretty much the first thing that comes to mind right away is computers can't feel. They can think. That's true. You could program them to think artificially, to be intelligent, make decisions, you know, record, memorize things, uh, learn from things, communicate, all of these different types of things that we do all of the processes of thinking that we do. You can have them do that. However, you can't make them feel. And that's true. A computer can't feel the same way a human being feels. 
right? But here's the thing about that. When you start thinking about feelings, okay, now this is this is a really interesting point right here, I think, is that the, our feelings that we feel, what are those? You have to ask yourself, what is a feeling? Now, we all feel feelings, we all have emotions, you know, um, and that's universal. People all have feelings. Human beings all have feelings. We feel things. We feel experience, love, uh, emotion, all these things, attachment, hatred maybe, you know, all of these different emotions that we have. A computer can't feel the way we do. It's not possible, really, because the hardware is different. Now, if you were to map out the brain and be able to chemically create or biologically grow a brain, then you could make it feel in the same way that we do. But here's the thing about feelings that the way I think of it kind of is a person's feelings, even though universally we all have feelings, we all have emotions, these types of things, these are processes of the mind. These are chemical reactions in the brain that occur. So outside of that person, a feeling is no more than chemicals reacting within the brain. Neurons firing, synapses, everything going off, causing feelings. So are those real outside of the experiencer, outside of the person or the people that experience them? Universally outside of them, not really. I mean, those things affect the way a person behaves. They're, the way they're feeling at a certain point in time will affect their behavior, yes. And that interacts with the physical world outside. But from a physical standpoint, they're just chemical reactions of the brain. So could we not replicate the same type of thing with a computer since outside of the computer, that's just processes of the processing of the computer, the hardware, right? So a computer could have a variable, let's say, that stores based on all kinds of different things and functions, how it's feeling at a certain time. I don't know, maybe how much power it has, let's say. Um, you know, when was the last time it was able to sleep, to sort data and information and defrag and do all these different types of things. And maybe some other things like temperature and different things like that that could affect how a computer could feel too. Because really, that's all we do too. Our feelings are based on what's happening with us. How much sleep did we get? How much food have we eaten? How are we, you know, feeling, really? Or more complicated ones like emotions such as love or things like this, which evolved, of course, out of uh, survival, you know, uh, of our species to propagate the species, right? So um, when, you, when you think of it that way, you kind of start to realize that emotions themselves, although real to the experiencer, outside of them, they're just a process. They're just part of the hardware. Really, they're just part of the chemical reactions of the brain. And they're not universally real. When you think of it that way, there really is no difference between programming a computer to have a feeling, a variable you would call feeling, or function, or process, or whatever, that is defined by a bunch of different things. So I think that's pretty interesting, if you think of it that way. Now, if you can have a computer that can simulate emotion, too, because again, like I said, those things, feelings, emotions, outside the experience are not really real, if you view it that way, then, of course, you can basically simulate, at least, every aspect of a human being using a computer. Pretty interesting, I think. So anyway, I think it's an interesting discussion, interesting way to think about things, whether or not in the future we can create uh, machine people, <laughs> artificial intelligence, artificial humans, and um, when you think of it that way, absolutely you can. But now they wouldn't be exactly the same as us unless they had the exact same hardware. And we're biological, made of flesh and blood and, you know, all these things. Computers are not. So they'll be different in that way. But in terms of every other way, I don't see why you couldn't do exactly that. And actually, from my experience with artificial intelligence, the hardest thing when it comes to uh, machine learning and, and this, uh, this subject or this topic is actually finding people that are smart enough to program the AI. So finding people that are actually able to do it. That's the hard part because we have to be so intelligent to be able to create the, that system to run, to create that code, to make it operate.
So that's the real challenge. It's not even really the hardware anymore because we pretty much got that. You know, web cameras, it's like, it's like watching, it's like an eye, you know, like you're watching, you know, uh, memory, processing, everything pretty much. So those are my thoughts on whether or not you can create an artificial human. I say absolutely. And um, let me know what you guys think about it. That's it for this video, guys. I'll see you for the next one. This is Trev. I'm saying peace.